Hi, I'm Randy Carranza. I've just finished my P40 and today I'm going to teach you how to do weathering. Weathering is just a basic technique of using paint, tape, a little bit of sanding, and a good airbrush. So the first thing you want to do, you want to make sure, and this is monocoat that I'm working on. So the monocoat itself, I've already started some of the weathering, but to give you an idea of what I've done first is I've sanded, I've used 600 sandpaper. And it's a wet and dry sandpaper, and you just go in and you just basically just sand it and, and get it roughed up. Once you do that, I just use a number two pencil, just like we used in school back in the old days. Take a little bit of painter's tape so it doesn't pull up the monocoat. I just uh, detack it a little bit. We'll go ahead and create one quick line. Just to give you an idea, I'm just using a pencil with just a little bit of pressure. Go one more time. The trick is not pushing the tape down too, because you don't want that monocoat to come up. You're going to have to go back and, and stretch it out if you do. All right, once you have your line pretty straightforward at this point, you could keep the tape on if you want. I've gone ahead and I've drawn all my panel lines already as you can see everything's already paneled after you put the panel lines on you have an option you can put a flat I use a Krylon clear because it's flat it gives you a surface that that the paints will adhere to and it also protects your pencil lines but the pencil lines they really don't come off that easy now one of the tricks I like to use is I take the tape I put it down and I get rid of all that tackiness. Even though blue painter's tape doesn't have that much tackiness, this really makes it easy on the monocoat. Now, what I like to do is I like to put those lines in front so when I get that panel going, I have the shadow falling back in the direction of the wind. This really gives it a nice effect. So. On the Iwata airbrush, it's just top feed using a very low pressure of about 25 PSI. I've got my paints. I use a Cretex paint. This paint's mixed at about 50-50, meaning 50% opaque and 50% extender. As you start, you want to first paint on top. You see how much paint is coming out first. Let's get a little bit going and then just go right to the edge and paint right to it. I'm, I'm really painting on top of the paint and letting the overspray make my panel. Uh, and it doesn't look like very much is going on, but you'd be surprised how much is going to be there. Now let's go ahead and we'll give a little bit of fade off. normally happens you get these streaks if you've looked at some of the older pictures in the planes and that's about it that's one panel line if you take a quick look a real close look at this you're gonna see you've got a really nice shadow over here now I'm not gonna worry too much about this because I have my cowling that's really gonna just go on top of all of this you don't need tape all the time you can also do like as things would be coming off of the engine and you would get these effects of the grease maybe coming out of that engine or the oil. I'm just really lightly, now I've already put the decals down so you're going to see that it even gets the decal a little bit dirty. You know, We're talking weathering here so don't worry about it getting a little bit dirty. Don't get too ridiculous with it. You want to see the number obviously and that's just a basic front. So right now let's go ahead and do this panel. Now when you have multiple panel lines going on top of each other, it's always best if you're going to be, in this case, I'm going to be taping off high here and I'm going to be spraying down so I have my fading down here. In something like this, always start at the lower one and work your way up because of the overspray going on top. So don't forget to take your tape, put it on your pants, and take it off. Just, just do it a couple times and just really just, however you can, 
to get some of that sticky off. Again, you're not really worrying too much about being... For One of the important things is to make sure that you get that tape right on that panel line. That will really give you the effect that you're looking for if it's right on there. And let's try to make it as straight as we can. And if anything, if put the tape on top of the line instead of on instead of over it. You want to be just above it. If you're gonna air, that's the better way to air. What I'm gonna do is make sure a little bit of that paint, see what kind of flow I got going. Now you can see I paint on top of the tape. And then I just work my way down just a little bit. This really lets me control what's going on. I want to, you know, just to make sure. You know, sometimes with such little paint you get a little clogged, so you just really make sure you have something good and even. And I'm just barely putting it on. Now it doesn't look like I really did very much. So now watch this. I take this tape off. You're going to be surprised how dark that panel line is. I mean, look at that. That is a really heavy panel line. And it looked like I barely even put it in. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in this case on this one. So let's go ahead and let's retape off of this again. I'm going to go the other direction. And you know, I'm just kind of just making decisions as I go. What just seems to going to look right. Same thing. Let's just put a little bit. Again, it doesn't look like I'm putting very much. And I'm just really putting it down lightly. And that overspray is what's making that line dark. Go ahead and get that paint coming out of this a little better. And it can be a little blotchy, it really doesn't matter because, again, it's a panel and it's weathering and it's never was, it's not even when something weathers. But you can see, we have a really nice gradient going. Alright, I'm using the same piece of tape. It's okay. It, it's really, it's really okay. Same thing in here. Now this is a little trickier because we've got a little angle going here. So I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I like to use. You just put it down on, on a piece of cardboard or anything. And go ahead and just thin your tape out. Just make it a nice thin piece. Thin tape, narrow, makes it very easy to get around edges. You can see I've used the same tape. Now I can get into that area that I need to get into. It just bends and conforms really nice to that curve. You can see I'm not. it's not folding on itself. And it makes it very, very simple. With that paint deadener, because of where I've already painted here, this tape, not being very strong, actually is very helpful right now because I'm not pulling up paint that I've just done. It's just barely sticking on here. Again, I'm just going to add that tape. Now, we've used this tape a couple times. Get the thing going, see where we're at. And let's go ahead, back it off. Again, I'm just barely, I'm really painting more of the tape than I am painting the surface. Because it's that tape. Now I'm going to put a little bit more up in here. Naturally, that's what that panel would look like. It's going to look a little darker up there. Pull that off, and look at that. We've got some really nice looking panel lines starting to go in here. Real simple, real easy. And I hope you learned how to do some panel lines. Uh, go ahead, shoot me an email if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll be happy to share any information. Uh, next video is going to be this thing finished. So, happy flying.